the dictionary describes coincidence as a remarkable concurrence of events or circumstances without a parallel causal connection. Carl Jung was a famous Swiss psychiatrist who had a strong belief in a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. Jung had a concept of synchronicity where he describes meaningful coincidences. Jung became convinced that everything in the universe is intimately connected and that suggested to him that there must exist a collective unconscious of humankind. The following stories describe coincidences that appear to go beyond mere chance as they tell of freakish outcomes and circumstances that cannot be explained. The following are four events in history with baffling unexplainable coincidences. Number 4. The Mongol Invasion of Japan The first Mongol invasion of Japan took place in November 1274 and consisted of 23,000 men and 800 ships. They were at sea for two weeks before landing at Hakata Bay in Japan. When the Battle of Wenai broke out on November 19th, Japan was in a very weak position. Initially, everything went well for the Mongolian invading force until a typhoon came and wrecked their fleet. The Mongols suffered horrendous losses and retreated after only one day of fighting, which was quite amazing considering that they had conquered almost everyone from Korea to Austria. Undeterred by this catastrophic event, as they were obviously not used to losing, the enormous Mongol fleet consisting of 140,000 soldiers and 4,000 ships with a two-pronged attack by China and Korea, returned seven years later to complete their mission and met the Japanese at the very same Hakata Bay. This new army was considered the best the Mongol leader Kublai Khan could mobilize, expecting to conquer Japan this second time around. Incredible as it may seem, once again, the Mongolian fleet was destroyed by yet another typhoon. What makes this story even more amazing is that storms almost never hit the Hakata Bay and one of the invasions wasn't even in typhoon season, where they tend to hit in the summer. And the first attack was in November. So how unlikely were the odds of the Mongols getting defeated at Hakata Bay, not by the Japanese, but by the weather? According to Japanese sources, a typhoon, like the one that hit the Mongols during the second invasion, occurs once in a hundred years, or once in a few hundred years. Number 3. King Umberto I In 1900, King Umberto I of Italy travelled to the city of Monza, and as he was away from his palace, decided to have an evening meal in a small restaurant. The date was July the 28th. He was accompanied by his aide, and there was much excitement in the restaurant. The owner came out to take the king's order personally. This shocked the king not because the owner was taking his order, but because the two of them were identical. Same facial looks, build, etc. And the king found out there was more, lots more. The king and the restaurant owner both had the same name, Umberto, and they were both born on March the 14th, 1844, and in the same town. But it didn't end there. Their wives were called Margarita, and both couples were married on the same day and had a son called Vittorio. The coincidence continued. King Umberto was crowned on the same day the restaurant was opened by Umberto, the owner. They served in the Italian military and were both promoted on the same day to different ranks. As we can imagine, the king was knocked out by this doppelganger, so much so that he decided that the following day the owner should visit the royal palace. The next day arrived, as they often do, and it was the 29th of June 1900. Umberto, the restaurant owner, couldn't however take up his invitation. He'd been killed in a shooting accident. 
the king was deeply shocked. The very same day, an assassin shot the king through the heart. The final amazing coincidence was, therefore, that they were both killed on the same day. Number 2. Abraham Lincoln When Abraham Lincoln was a young man, he had a friend with financial difficulties who had to sell all of his belongings to survive. To help his friend out, Lincoln bought a barrel from him for one dollar. He had no idea as to what was inside the barrel and placed it into storage. Years later, Lincoln was deciding whether to enter into journalism or the legal profession. While thinking about his future, he decided to open the barrel to see what was actually inside. In the barrel was a set of law books. He took this to be a sign and chose the law profession, which in turn led to politics and eventually presidency. Sometimes it's as if coincidence and synchronicity are pointing to our destiny. On other occasions, coincidence can present itself as an historical blueprint, as was the cause with Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy, where amazing coincidences linked them. Although they are fairly well known, they still make an interesting read for anyone interested in coincidences. Coincidence number one. Abraham Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846 and John F. Kennedy was elected to Congress in 1946. 100 years apart. Number two. Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860 and Kennedy was elected president in 1960. Number three, a month before Lincoln was shot, he was in Monroe, Maryland. And a month before Kennedy was shot, he was with Marilyn Monroe. Number four, both Lincoln and Kennedy were shot on a Friday, behind the head and in the presence of their wives. Number five, they were both assassinated by Southerners and succeeded by Southerners. Number six, John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated Lincoln, was born in 1839, and Lee Harvey Oswald, who assassinated Kennedy, was born in 1939. Number seven, both Booth and Oswald were known by three names, and the names are made up of 15 letters. Number eight, Lincoln's assassin shot the president in a theater and then hid in a warehouse. Oswald shot Kennedy from a warehouse and hid in a theater. Number nine, both Booth and Oswald were themselves assassinated before their trials. Number 10, both their successors were called Johnson and were born 100 years apart. Andrew Johnson was born in 1808 and Lyndon Johnson, who succeeded Kennedy, was born in 1908. Number 11, Lincoln's secretary named Kennedy warned him not to go to the theater. Kennedy's secretary, named Lincoln, warned him not to go to Dallas. Number 12. Lincoln was shot in the theater named Ford, and Kennedy was shot in a Lincoln car made by Ford. Number 1. Edwin Booth. So, staying with the Abraham Lincoln theme, Edwin Booth was the brother of John Wilkes Booth. The assassin of Abraham Lincoln, where in August 1864, he saved a young man at Jersey City train station. The incident occurred while a group of passengers were late at night purchasing tickets from the conductor. The platform was about the height of the car floor, and there was a narrow space between the platform and the car body. There was some crowding, and a young man was pressed hard against the car body. But the train began to move and the young man lost his footing and dropped into the open space, finding himself in a helpless position. Suddenly, his coat collar was grabbed and he was quickly pulled up, back onto the station platform. The young man turned around to see who his rescuer was and saw that it was Edwin Booth. And like his brother, John Wilkes Booth, Edwin was also a theatrical star, so the young man knew the name of his rescuer as soon as he saw his face. He graciously thanked him and thought no more about it. Edwin Booth's infamous brother John Wilkes Booth would assassinate President Abraham Lincoln a year later. The coincidence in this story 
is that the young man who was saved by Edwin Booth was none other than Robert Todd Lincoln, the eldest son of Abraham Lincoln. 